Good morning guys. Uh, I've got a lot to get to today. Lots of piercing updates. Um, some good, some bad, some just general updates. Um, so last off, in my last piercing related video, I mentioned I was getting a bunch of new jewelry. I've gotten some of that. I haven't got the I haven't got the filter more the little braid piece. I've got a few of the uh, uh, conch stretching pieces and I've ordered a few more scents. Um, I got my 16, 17, and uh, 18 millimeter conch jewelry ordered, um, or not ordered, they came in. And uh, I've already got the conch on the right side up to 18 millimeters. When I went to 17 millimeters, it was super easy. Didn't really swell much. Um, I only stayed at 17 millimeters maybe for five days. And then I moved up to 18 millimeters. Uh, the actual jewelry does look bigger, but the hole doesn't look much bigger because um, it's quite a bit thicker. The jewelry is thicker, so the hole doesn't look quite as big as it would if it was thinner jewelry. Uh, that might not make a lot of sense, but... There's a close-up of it. It's pretty red right now because I also stretched this guy here from a zero to a double zero recently. Um, this will be a tunnel soon uh, to go along with everything else. So just right now, it's I've got a, a long sort of post in there just to give room for swelling and stuff. Um, generally, whenever you stretch, especially cartilage and stuff like that, there is quite a bit of swelling, so you want to heal something longer than what you're going to want to leave in um, once it's fully healed. So, those are some of the positives. Now I'll get to the negatives. So, even when I made the last uh, piercing update video, uh, the tissue in my forward, uh, forward helix on the right side was very solid. It was actually thicker than the one on the left, but... I think it's to do with the, the masks I've been wearing um, at work and stuff. I've been wearing masks for 9, 10 hours a day. And I have fairly big ears to begin with. And they've been made bigger by all the stretching. So wearing masks makes them really sore and it even pulls them a little bit. They kind of bend in like this. Um, and that has been folding the right helix, forward helix piercing kind of down. And it's it led to a bit of a tear. And by the time uh, I noticed the tear, because it wasn't painful, um, I downsized the piercing immediately as soon as I knew, noticed there was a, a slight tear in it. And I would say within three days, the tissue had thinned out to the point where it was going to come out no matter what I did sort of thing. I've had that happen one other time. I had it happen over here too but for different reasons. Uh, same, same thing, it had a tear in it, which basically means the piercing is almost certainly going to reject. That's different from migration, which is what happens in a piercing that you've had for a really long time. Sometimes the, the tissue on either side can thin out a little bit. It's happened in my bridge. Um, so these used to be quite a bit thicker, but they're not rejecting. They're completely normal. Like they're fine where they are kind of thing. This, however, is no longer in. So I wore it just for the sake of this video to show. I can still wear it if I want to, but the uh, outer edge is completely gone. The tear started last Wednesday and it was finished by yesterday morning. So this is a Wednesday. So within six days, it went through the entire tissue. Um, I was not happy about it, obviously. It, for a for, uh, big part of it is I'm a real symmetry guy. I like to have things mirrored one side and the other. That being said, my ears are pretty different. Um, so the right and the left ear aren't the same anyway, and they never were going to be. So having one less hole in the right ear um, doesn't really bother me that much. I would prefer to have it. And I've even given thought to just wearing it anyway, because for whatever reason, the tissue that is left there is enough to hold the, the piercing in place for, I have to take it out. It won't just come out on its own. But uh, I'm not going to live in denial. And it looks super silly from the side. 
to have this in like that. I, I told the whole story on um, the podcast or podcast I did recently, so I'm not going to get too too into the details. But uh, yeah, it sucks anytime you lose a piercing. Um, for me, since I've been doing piercings for over 20 years, um, it's a passion project for me. And I, in my own defense, I feel as if I did everything right. Uh, it's just when you're in areas like this, there isn't a lot of tissue to begin with. And then when you're putting stress on them with the masks, like I was, um, it's really kind of not a surprise that I had um, rejection in that piercing, especially since it was quite a bit bigger. It was two sizes bigger than this one. Uh, it was a double zero where this is a two, and that was because there was more tissue in the right than there was on the left, so it made sense to stop at an earlier point than the left. Um, but yeah, I, I don't feel like I did anything wrong in how I stretched it. I don't think I went too fast. I don't think I was too reckless, anything like that. I just think that the world that we're living in today isn't great for big forward helix piercings. And uh, if I did do anything wrong, it's that I should have invested in a bandana or something instead of a mask is all that my wife uh, mentioned to me is maybe wearing a bandana would be better for your ears in general. And I think I am going to try and wear something else because I have big ears anyway. I mean, even without stretching them, they're huge. And uh, even just having a mask on all day makes my ears pretty sore. Uh, they clip around the back of my conches and stuff like that too and pull on them. So, I mean, I'm not saying that was was the reason necessarily, but I'm pretty sure it was. Just having that pressure from the mask all the time. Now, that being said, I actually like the look of scars. I don't mind the little notched look. Kind of looks like I'm an alley cat or something. Like I... Like a cat that's out on the road getting in fights all the time or something. You know, they come in, they've got a tear in their ear. and Yeah, it's it's it's, a, it's, its own look. But obviously, I prefer the tunnel. Um, but I'm not letting that mess me up too bad. I'm not too hurt over it. The only thing I'm a little concerned about is showing it off on Instagram. Because people don't get it. They'll think it was something it wasn't. And they'll think, oh, he, he screwed up his ear doing this or that. And... You know, you, on YouTube, you can explain things a little better. You can take time to kind of hash it out. But the still shot on Instagram is never going to look. Um, it's never going to tell the whole story. And people are going to come to their own conclusions. They're not going to read the caption and all that stuff. So I'm not really looking forward to having to um, show that off. And I wouldn't have to show it off. Because people are probably like, well, why don't you just not post that? But uh, my year is pretty pretty famous on Instagram so I'm just gonna choke back and tell the story of how it happened and people can believe it or not or they can think what they want but I'm not one for living in the past or pretending so I'll always just tell the truth it's the same thing with like the black on black and the white on black stuff where I'm always showing how these things heal and you know uh shop manager and I were joking about it um if anyone criticizes how it happened or anything like that, just ask them to send you a picture of their healed uh, double zero forward helix piercing <laughs> and ask the story of how they got there. Because I actually don't know anyone else with a bigger forward helix than I had. I can't think of anyone. If you do know of someone with a bigger forward helix than I had, uh, or even this one, please feel free to let me know who. I'm always interested to know. But, uh, yeah, so a bit sad there, but there is good news on the horizon is I may in a few weeks be getting my tongue split finally. Uh, the artist that I've been wanting to see is around my area in a few weeks, and I'm sort of in communication to get it done finally, and that would mean also uh, uh, severing the tongue tie that I have and potentially having to relearn how to talk and potentially no longer having a lisp, so... I guess life gives and takes. I'm not too, not too, not letting myself wallow about it too much. Like I said, I'd be more upset uh, if it was a piercing that I was a little more attached to. But the forward helixes were cool. They're not uh, 
They're not my favorite. Like, I'd be more upset if it was my lip or my filter or my septum that I had to say goodbye to. Or uh, even the left ear is in perfect condition. Um, this ear seems to work better than the right ear for whatever reason. The right ear always has more complications. So there are things that could have happened that I would have been more upset about. Um, and if I was able to get my tongue split, that would counterbalance all of it. Because I've been wanting to do that for years. I've talked about it lots on podcasts and on my vlogs here, so it won't be any surprise. Um, but yeah, that would be that would be a nice thing to happen now um, to counterbalance the bed that I just had to take out one of my little piercing babies. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So I've got my conch to eighteen millimeters. It was pretty easy to do. Um, it's swollen still and kind of red still because that was actually a stretch. The 17 millimeter wasn't much of a stretch. So that's going to probably be red and swollen for a little while and it'll calm down. The worst that happens is I have to back it back to a 17 millimeter, in which case the, the tissue regenerates a little bit. Uh, not regenerates, sorry, that calms down. And then I slip the 18 millimeter back in once the swelling goes down. Cartilage doesn't shrink that fast, so um, a lot of what the the problem is right now is that the tissue is swollen, so it feels like it's the jewelry is too big to be in there, even though it's already stretched. So when, sometimes when you go down a millimeter, it gives that swelling a chance to subside, and then you can go right back up. So that's pretty common in stretching cartilage, is backing down a size for a few days, and then going right back up when the skin is happier again or less angry we'll say so yeah pretty typical um i do have a a 19 millimeter piece already and 20 millimeter piece already on the way for it because i'm just going to keep going in this right one as big as i can go because as i said on the last video i'm pretty sure there's not much of a limitation on this one i don't think i can go much bigger in this one because of the giant helix, but over here I think I can get to 20 millimeters pretty easily. And that might be, that might be big enough. We'll see. <laughs> Who knows? Definitely some comp compensation going on from having to take one piercing out, uh, and and my way of compensating for that is, well, let's stretch something else or let's get another piercing or something like that. Used to be back in the old days if I had to take out a piercing, I'd get another one to replace it. But since I'm no longer getting pierced, it just means investing a little more in one I already have. As weird as that sounds. If you have piercings you've had to take out, you'll probably know exactly what the feeling is. But anyway. So yeah, hopefully in a few weeks here, I'll be doing a video about my tongue split. That'd be nice. Or else if I don't, then definitely more interested in it now than ever because my appetite has been wet by the proximity of it. So that will be happening sooner than later now, I'm pretty sure. Anyway, that's going to do it for this one. And if you guys have enjoyed this video, or if you didn't, whatever, let me know in the comments. Give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you guys again soon.